Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F16C and we're looking at using the AIM-9 mic and x-ray sidewinder variants with the helmet mounted queuing system. So first today's controls. To fire the missile, push, weapon release button, depress. To change the type of weapon selected, push and hold, nose wheel steering and missile step button. To change to ACM bore sight search and to acquire a target lock, TMS, up to switch to dogfight mode dogfight missile override switch and uncage switch to uncage the seeker head of the missile let's switch to dogfight mode next let's turn on our helmet mounted cue system this knob here we can change the brightness and we're pretty much always going to go up to full brightness if we move our head away from the hud we get this display we can see that we currently have no radiation emissions in acm we have our current G of 0.7, our current airspeed CAS of 303 knots, our master arm is on, our current master mode is there, the bearing and distance from bullseye to us, our current magnetic heading of the helmet, our current slant range which is zero because we don't have a target locked, our current barometric altitude and our dynamic aiming cross in the middle. Next, let's push and hold nose with steering button to choose our AIM-9. Currently, we've got the AIM-120 selected. Now we've got the Sidewinder selected and you can hear the growl. If it's not chosen cool automatically, we need to switch it to cool. The coolant will last about 90 minutes and we'll need it to increase the sensitivity of the seeker head. We can step through the different stations for the missiles that we've got them. We can change between slave and bore methods here. We have two methods of employing the AIM-9 with the helmet mounted queuing system. One, in bore mode without a radar track. Two, in slave mode with a radar track. First, we'll show the bore method without a radar lock. We select here, bore. What happens now is if we move our head around, you can see the seeker head position of the currently selected missile is shown by this diamond here. And if we move it out of slurable limits of the missile, it will stop chasing our dynamic cross. You can see there it gives up at that point, which is the gimbal limit of the missile. And we can see that it's off to the right here because it's got a cross through it. It's out of our display of our helmet mounted queuing system. All we have to do is find a target and look at it. Note how the helmet mounted queuing system symbology is superseded by the HUD if we are looking at the HUD. And then when we come out of the HUD, we're now on the helmet mounted queuing system. So let's go and look at a target. We've got them right there. You can hear the change of tone, which means that the seeker head has found a heat signature that it can lock onto. So all we do now is press the uncage button to uncage the seeker head from the helmet mounted queuing system to the heat source. It's now got a tone to fire and it's now tracking the targets independent of where my helmet mounted queuing system is going. Again, you can see if it's off the display of my helmet mounted cue system, there's a cross there. All we now, to do, all we now need to do is fire. And the beauty of this is we can fire high off ball sight, up to kind of 80 degrees off ball sight, and the missile will track, especially an AIM-9X like we've got selected here. Note, because we've got no radar lock, there is no ranging information. And it looks like we fired a little too far away, and that is one of the problems with ball mode, because we do not have dynamic ranging information. The missile is now dead, it's automatically stepped to our next weapon. Now we're going to show slave both with a radar lock. First of all, we're going to press TMS up to initiate our bore sight search. The radar is now following wherever this egg, as I call it, is facing, which is following our dynamic cross up to the slurable limits of the radar. All I've got to do now is put the target in the egg and press TMS up again and we'll get a lock. We now have a radar lock. We have our target designator box there showing where the hostile is. We've got our slant range now. It's contributed by the F, the fire control radar of 5.3 nautical miles. Otherwise, the symbology is the same. Now, what I'm gonna do is, these guys are about to head out of limits, so I'm gonna wait until they come back around before we fire. So I'm gonna unlock with TMS aft. Let them come back around. Okay, I'm gonna go TMS up again. Let's get our egg in play. Wait until they get in slurable limits. Okay, we should be in slurable limits now. So TMS up to lock and we've acquired a target 4.5 nautical miles. Now we're going to press the uncage button, which will uncage the seeker head of the missile represented by this flashing diamond to slave to our radar track. And you can see it now has the audible lock tone and the diamond of the seeker head is locked to the hostile there. We can now fire. Next missile is selected, currently slaved to Borsight, and we can slave it to him again by pressing on cage. Fire again. 
Once the missile is fired, it's fire and forget, so we can unlock the target if we want. Note when the Seeker Head Diamond is outside of the field of view of the helmet mounted display, then we've got it with a cross through it here. Also, I can point out that if the target designator box is off of the display of the helmet mounted cure system, then we get a vector from our dynamic cross to the target designation. Now you'll note that both of our missiles failed again because we ran out of range and that's because currently January 2020 we're missing one vital piece of information. According to the flight manual if we get a radar track with our helmet mounted QA system we should get our dynamic launch zone. It's currently not working but it will be soon. I'll overlay from the flight manual here this is what we should be seeing it's radar ranging information which we can use to ensure that we fire the missile at the correct range to ensure that it has enough flight envelope to reach the target. That's all I've got to show with the helmet mount QA system and AIM-9 and X as they stand at the moment. I hope that was useful and see you later.